Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ravinia Festival. Please note that the taking of photographs, including the use of camera phones and the use of audio or video equipment, is strictly prohibited. As a courtesy to the artist and your fellow patrons, please ensure that all mobile phones, pagers, and anything with an on-off switch have been silenced. We appreciate your consideration. Thank you for making it a great day at Ravinia.
I enjoyed so much uh, listening to you that I was sitting there and I forgot that I am the one who is supposed to give the class. <laughs> but since I have to give the class, we have no choice. I want to begin the class by uh, using, you know, the time to say something that is the, you know, my mission in life. You know, the thing that you feel when, and I don't have it uh, very often because I, every time I say something, I think maybe there is another way, maybe I'm mistaken, etc. But in this respect, I feel that even if I'm the only one in the world who say that, and everyone says the opposite, I'm right and everyone is wrong. <laughs> and I will, I will begin, I, I will do it very short. I don't want to take too much time on it, especially that we have an uh, audience that not necessarily musicians, but I cannot, you know, I have to say this. When you tune so carefully your A, yeah? And then you so carefully make sure that the D is a perfect fifth with the A. What's the relations, relation of your D with the D of the piano? A bit lower. Lower than the piano. Okay. From this low D, you go another perfect fifth. What's the relation between your G and the G of the piano? Like if the difference, you know, now I pretend that I know something about math. Uh, if the difference is X between the D, your D and the D of the piano, the G, 2X. And then the C, 3X. Why, why in the world we accept that? I don't think we should. And I don't care that everyone goes, takes the A and tune, a perfect fifth, I think it's a huge mistake because, you know, we want, you know, really to be in tune with the instrument, with what we are playing. And I think, you know, that uh, maybe we should have the courage to ask the A from the piano and then to ask the D from the piano, the G and the C. And uh, in not, not in this piece, but there are many pieces where it's so important. I can give you a list. And I think the next generation of players, you know, maybe now you hear me, maybe you will do, maybe you will not. I'm leaving on, on Saturday, so you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but, uh, but maybe someone is going to take, you know, a place and maybe more and more. I think the next generation of players will tune that way. Uh, the sec you know, and add to that, that when we play, say, in a quartet, you know, we also tune perfect fifth, which is a huge mistake, because the, you know, that's the only thing that in tune, the fifth. But the circle of thirds doesn't agree so if you, in a quartet, you can try it. If you play the open uh, uh, Cs with the open Es, they sound awful. With the A, it sounds awful. I think we should tune in a way that, you know, that, that chords really make sense. And I believe, you know, as I also believe that every generation makes progress over the other generation technically, the same as in sports, all the records bound to be fallen. I think, you know, uh, we will have a time when a quartet will play the Dvořák American Quartet F major, because F and C major are the most vulnerable, and they will tune the C to the A, and then they will play, uh, say, uh, a quartet in C major and will tune the C to the E. And then they will play the Dvořák piano quintet and they will play different than the other two types. The, I really believe that this is going to happen. So uh, 
Uh, this is my wishful thing, and this is the mission of my life, you know, to change people and to do that. And so that begins now. I want you to do it. And then I, I'm going to ask you, I'm telling the audience, no, if he is playing out of tune, it's my fault, because I'm asking to tune differently, but it's not, you, you're not going to feel it. No, better, better. If we have time. That's good. I would like you to play the beginning of the last movement. Just the first four bars. And I know that you... Of you the last yeah, yeah. I want to show you something. <laughs> okay. Listen, all you have to do is ta da dum, okay? You know, and then ta da dum, you know, go there. And you, you know, pom, 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 yeah? If you want, you can do it slower, or, you know. I know that you two played it before. Okay. Why I let you play it? Because I'm asking you, if when you play tune like this, if you are not happy when you play toro, toro your sister, and it sounds for me every time I hear playing the, this beginning, it sounds so awful because the C is too low, you know? So I finished with that, okay? And I just would say, I would say one thing more. This is only about the open strings. I think also when we play with piano, and I'm not saying you don't do it to a big degree, uh, when we play with piano, we should play with the intonation of the piano because we play the same notes. When I grew up, Everyone talked about expressive intonation, and I, as a student, I had to play major, third, happy, you know, sharp, minor, you know, low, and leading tone, leading, and I asked my teachers, but the piano cannot do it, so, and we play together, and you know what was the answer? I remember it like yesterday. Oh, the piano is instrument out of tune, <laughs> but happily, happily, we have, we have uh, another timbre, so no one can hear it. Everyone can hear it. We don't want to hear it. You know, that's all. And now I finish with this intonation, and we go here. Okay, now, what's on your mind when you begin the piece, both of you? Yeah. For me, it's about one thing, appassionato. You know, uh, Brahms used, you, uh, used to write uh, pieces in pairs. You know, like he would write a uh, piano quartet, immediately another one. He would write a quartet, immediately, you know, he wrote a clarinet sonata, immediately the other, Semir. You know, and he wanted to experiment, you know, or to uh, explore the expressive possibilities. They were always different. So uh, the other sonata is Amabile, you know, totally different. Then for me, this one is from the first moment, should be passionate, yeah? And I say again, you know, I really enjoyed your playing, and you know, the level, you know, is really high. And as opposed to what I said about how to tune your viola, which I'm sure nothing I will say today, I'm not sure because there are many ways to do it. But let's try beginning already. 
To show this is about passion. And the same for you. ask you, it spoke of forte, yes? Mm -hmm. It spoke of forte more than mezzo forte or less? In this situation, very close to mezzo forte for me. So why does he write poco forte? I will give you the answer because we don't have that much time. <laughs> and it's, even though I'm sure about the answer, I'm not really sure. OK, but I will say what I think. Uh, the piano quintet, Brahms, that was played not long ago here, the trio of the scherzo. You, sh you can check it afterwards. The piano is playing is poco forte. The cello who does pom, pa, pa, pom, pa, pa, is mezzo forte. He, he really wanted to, you know, to say that the piano is the melody, the other, you know. So for me, it's a kind of a sign that at least for Brahms, poco forte is, is more than mezzo forte, almost forte. Keep, the, keep it, you know, the forte comes. But you still, I think, more passion, more sound. Okay. okay? Yeah. And I would say this. I would say this. When we are passionate, yeah. we are not so patient. Mm -hmm. At least I, I talk for myself. When, I, when I'm passionate, I, have in, I am rather impatient. You know, like, come in passionately. Okay. Last time. I am a person who likes to do everything opposite of other people. <laughs> you see, it's F minor, yeah? For me, This is our first notes of the piece. Yeah? Okay. So from here. Yeah. Passionate people will never begin a diminuendo before it's written. 
Yeah, okay, do it. Okay. So, next subject. There, in the construction of this movement, he always add two bars, additional bar all the time. So, uh, then later, uh, two. and it goes on and on here. at the core of this movement. And I think it's already a written note that he is doing. I would not add. Okay. Or at least I would not add much. So when you finish, uh, see. Uh, you don't need the T. Yeah, let's try it from here. Like this also. You have exactly the same as she. So try to be not together, but super together. Yeah? Let's try. For me, the movement from first note to the last is about passion. You know, it can be piano, yeah, but still, not. Uh, yeah. Sorry to repeat, repeat. I, I, I'm annoying. No. You know, it's my middle name. My daughters called me, say it should be my middle name. Annoying. Ta -da -da -da. Don't hear the last note. You should be, this should be like in the orchestra, you know, like the violin, and cello. Um, 
ترینم that you change here, T, da, da, because there, is, there are no uh, uh, diminuendi anymore, yes. but maybe not change not the so boing. Bad. You know, either... <laughs> okay. I play with one bow and suffer, because to be passionate is also to suffer. <laughs> You're too young to know that, but, uh, okay? So, from there, yeah. Okay, uh, something technical. I think it should go with the uh, shape of the bow inside. You have to hear every note. You have to try it. Same thing to the two bars, yeah. Okay. This is another case. Gonzalo, I technically, I noticed, maybe we talked about it, but I still see it. Because your bow goes here, like this, you are in the field of bow. If you want a better sound, yeah. yeah. Noticed, you know, particularly on this ear with people, maybe it's a generational thing. You tend to stop, you know, 
Donna, I think the, the music continues. And maybe I'm influenced by a fantastic uh, lecture that I heard a long time ago by Leonard Bernstein, which was called, it's a series of lectures, The Unanswered Question. And the first one, he basically says that a movement of a sonata is not a chapter in the book, is a sentence. And in fact, you know, we call it movement because it moves all the time. It, you know? And also in German, you say Satz, sentence. And you put too many full stops. I think whatever you do, you know, you can be free, but think, you know, it has to have this, uh, yeah. So let's do some bars there. Now. Okay. I'm already teaching 137 years. <laughs> yeah. And I noticed something statistically. The people This is already tentative. So what I would like to do is that you play. And if it's out of tune, you know, people are still killing each other, uh, you know, and uh, we have terrible elections and, uh, you know, whatever. It's not the end of the world. And try it now, and if you miss, it's my fault, okay? Okay. Because of time issues, I would like to go before the sostenuto, maybe from very beautiful like this, but I think that the coda begins. Yeah. I think it would be even more beautiful if it begins. You know, so maybe resist the temptation, don't make ritenuto, and do the piano bar. in tempo, and then, when you it will be more impressive. There is only one coda, not not two.
No, no. Don't announce it. And then it's the same thing. Even if it's piano, I I kind of a strong believer that on the viola you don't ever play flautando. A good sound, yeah. Maybe directly I think maybe you should begin the moving forward a little bit, a little before, so we hear it, yeah? Yeah, uh, maybe it all, you know, oh, 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 the piano. You see? You are on the, f yeah, but not loud, but. to say this, in my opinion, you know, the uh, sotto voce, piano sotto voce, it's one place, you know, that I'm, I do think about the clarinet, the original, because the clarinet of all the instrument is the instrument that can play real something between silence and sound. And that's I think I would try at least, you know, and it take time to find, you know, maybe I don't know. I want, you know, to have the feeling that we are after tirom, tirom, pirom, tirom, tirom. It's dead, tirom, and that up there. You know, not too much vibrato and really kind of soft. Can you try this? And remember. Yeah, like uh, any any place before. Not too much vibrato. Yeah, but wait, wait until she plays her uh, beats. Yeah, 
Okay, bravo. Very good. Okay, I have to say this. The next person who is playing, uh, Hindemith wrote this sonata where there is no interruption between the movements. And actually, you know, between the second and third movement is in the, this edition, it's written subito. I mean, attacka, not subito, attacka. Maybe even attacka subito. But uh, I saw the, the, the manuscript and he didn't write Attacker. He write the transition between second and third movement should be unnoticeable. In other words, the audience should not know that there is a third movement when they hear it, unnoticeable. So therefore, I think I'm going to let Ursula play the whole sonata so I don't go against in the mid. One minute, apparently. So, anyone uh, has the result of the soccer game? <laughs> what? Look. One, one. Are you looking, Paul? Yeah.
Bravo. Yeah, uh, this was a performance that was quite close to the way I think it should be. And uh, I really much enjoyed both of you. Before we go, uh, if there are violists here, uh, I, I have a mission of, in my life about some notes here that I would like to show you. And uh, even if all the world play the other notes, I am right and they are wrong. <laughs> OK. Uh, play uh, this from Tom Pum Bright. Play the the way it's printed, if you remember. Yeah. yeah. About okay. Anyway, you know, I I, I want to tell the violists here that uh, many many years ago I played the sonata in a festival which was called German Expressionism. And uh, the concert was sponsored by the Hindemith Institute. And they uh, just sent me the, not the autograph, but you know, like before the edition, you know, the first. And they say in the letter, uh, we ask you, Mr. Arad, please, in this place, play the right notes because there, there are mistakes in the edition. So the second one that she played is, you know, what is written. Unfortunately, every violist, you know, played, you know, and for years and years, I try to tell people, you know, and uh, uh, with almost no success. You know, people stick to the printed uh, uh, thing. And my uh, big dream in life is that one day people will play the right notes. And it's not that I think, you know, that those, you know, that, that's the information that I got. And I, I think it has to do also with, you know, we have all kinds of competitions and critics and so on, and people are afraid that uh, other people don't know, and they, uh, they play uh, the notes which are printed. And I think you know, it's better to play the right note and to do it with unbelievable assuredness that people don't think that you made a mistake. Play it once you know, and make a rubato here, ta -da -da -da, and slow it down even to sh show the world that you know, you want to tell them something. This is a C flat, yeah? And play it very flat. Okay, that's the way I would play it, yeah? Uh, so that's the, the second, you know, in one day I'm telling you about two missions in my life. One is how to tune the instrument, and the second thing is to play the right note. And believe me, I don't have any other mission. You know, that's it, two missions. Okay, now. This piece is one of the official, you know, first pieces which belongs to what we call German Expressionism. Which is about what? Um, really like exaggerated, just in other art terms, like really dark shadows and really bright lights and just really big extremes. Yeah, yeah, extreme. And they don't 
they didn't want to conform to established uh, patterns or even you know in terms of form you know like that uh, you know like there is a form sonata and we have to do it there is a development and there is this and that and they they you know it was in the spirit of the time you know they want to to shake all this and uh, say you know we can write something personal and bold and we are not confirm uh, confirm uh, conform to this it's known that Debussy uh, one time they played the Beethoven, uh, Beethoven symphony and suddenly he, he got up and said, oh, he developed. Uh, uh, he developed, that means he makes the development, you know, as expected. Yeah, so, but Debussy was not German, by the way. Uh, so, but, but at that point, you know, they really were looking for something much more, you know, bold and personal, explosive, they did not shy away, you know, for doing bizarre things. Actually, there is a bizarre thing here in this sonata that I would like you to even dare, you know, it was not bad. I think you should dare more. You know, like, uh, it should not be beautiful, you know, like this. want. I didn't prepare it. You know, I would like you to try, but I would like you to try a little before. See, here I tell you what, what I do. This. But uh, so I would like you to begin here and try it, you know, and I ask you, I take the responsibility. Yeah, whatever you want. Did I like it? Yes or no? You know, you don't care. You, but you do, you do whatever you think, you know, uh, announce that now we are going to play something that he's, he asked to be bizarre, yeah? Yeah, bizarre, you know, boom, boom. Like, I personally, what I feel when I play it, like uh, uh, an elephant in the circus dancing, which is cruel and funny and whatever, you know, like boom, boom, you know, or dancing, you know, so time. And there. After we did the uh, out of tune, -da 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 -da, and, and I'm not saying that out of tune, just a little bit, I would try to play this in tune. Yeah. No, no, seriously. Your intonation should not always, oh, that's the funny thing that we are doing. And I, I could take it a little faster, you know, like. Like you are talking, you know, Schoenbergian, you know. Something more expressive. I 
advise really strongly to look at paintings for the time, not only for the time, for the, the German expressionist, and to get inspired. For me, you know, maybe because it's chromatic and being chromatic is color, yeah? I almost think I'm a German expressionist uh, painter with the, the brush. You know, something, yeah? And yeah, also I would add to this that they carried, the painters carried the, the exaggeration so far that some of their uh, painting are like caricatures. You know, I remember one which shows a German general who has so many medals that he cannot keep him stay himself straight. He is like this. Because they, and you can see how the medals. And then Hindemith also, this is not the only joke or you know, cynical thing or whatever you call it. He, he has a, a whole quartet like this. Yeah? Uh, and uh, Max, yeah? mini Max. And then uh, in the Kammermusik number five, last movement, there is a, what he called military march, which is a caricature of what was going on at that, at that time. So every, every time you, know, you have the opportunity to look at painting and to read books from that time, it, it is helping, yeah? I remember, I have to tell this story, someone was playing this piece and at that point there was a exhibition at the Art Institute, uh, which was called Decadent Art. And that was the exhibition that Hitler assembled so that they go from one village to the other, from one town to the other, uh, so that they make fun of those intellectuals, painters and stuff like this. And you know, a lot of people from the German Expressionism are there and uh, he, they assembled it again, and it went in the uh, more important museums in the world. It was one of the best exhibition ever. And uh, uh, we had a student here who played this and said, go, you know, go, go to the museum. And he didn't have time. And I said, it's more important than your lessons. It's more important than practicing. Go and see it. And he never did. And, uh, I regretted it. So I think you should, and today you can really look at it, you know, Google and all this, you can really look, yeah? So, uh, to, you know, like this, you really imagine. You know, like you talk, yeah? I think, to even be more successful, two things. One is to play it even more in tempo, because he asked for almost tempo primo. The second, that I think it will 
enhance more what you're doing is if we respect though that this is piano, the first crescendo becomes here much later, much later, and he has a plan because this is a mezzo forte and it goes to the first forte. So even when you play, uh, still you, are, you should be in piano. Can we try it one more time and I promise not anymore. It's better, but you know, you will think about it and you play, you will play it each time a little different until you find your way to do it. Now I would like to take a place that is the opposite, that is tender and uh, beautiful, you know, let's, let you choose. Like maybe, yeah. So now when you play this, to hear Ursula's more, most beautiful sound, if I can put you under some pressure. So, already from, uh, and it's not only the sound, you know, it's what you are saying with this, yeah? really beautiful. You know, the E-flat and the thing, you're really beautiful. I think you should have more stuff like this, you know, in, the, in this sonata. What I found uh, a little lacking is when you play the triple piano here, I think you should have the car courage, you know. Uh, This is kind of, you know, if I compare all this to Alice in Wonderland because of the variations, this is where she is falling asleep. So, yeah. So let's do just the beginning for the for the triple piano afterwards. Thank you. 
even less. And now, She plays the C, the last C, and the piano still ringing, yeah? And she is so happy that I told her to tune her viola to the piano. <laughs> yeah, because that sounds beautiful when you do it. And so uh, I, think, I think we have to, we do have to stop now. Uh, all I can say is bravo, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a little time for the next piece and I have to apologize to the next composer that it's going to be a little. <laughs> Yeah, very quickly. Uh, every, the pieces are uh, written in, with my own musical language, but every piece has some kind of a hint or more from a uh, famous viola piece, which if there is such thing as a famous viola piece. But, uh, and it carries the first name of the composer because of it, and if you will, it's like a thank you note that, uh, thank you not uh, to the composer for having written this, uh, uh, this wonderful piece. So I, during the year, you know, like caprices usually are uh, things out of the box, you know, uh, caprice, you know, uh, not respecting anything, any form or anything, and uh, and also, it turns out that people would write caprices, you know, when they wanted to challenge themselves or other people instrumentally. And uh, so I wrote, you know, kind of uh, the caprices when I was in a bizarre mood, you know, of writing a caprice, you know, or out of the box or something like this. Also, when I wanted to challenge myself or other people. And then, uh, with the ears, the caprice piled, you know, and uh, when I arrived to, I, 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 you know, when they uh, accumulated, I thought maybe one day I will have 24 caprices, like, uh, you know who, Paganini, and then when I arrived to uh, 12, I published them because I'm a modest guy, and, and half of Paganini is good enough for me. 
So that's, that's about it, you know, but every caprice, you know, like uh, the first person is going to play a caprice which is called Paul, and uh, it uses actually the, a lot of material. It's my caprice, it's not, not in the mid, but a lot of material that you heard in the sonata. And the second, if we have time, is called Wolfgang, and uh, it's uh, use, using a, one motive, only one motive from uh, the wonderful Sinfonia Concertant by, uh, by Mozart. But it's nothing like the Sinfonia Concertant, it's actually the opposite. Yeah.
let's, you know, I want to just go over it a little quickly because of lack of time. So uh, I, I will just say, you know, stuff. Uh, very good. Uh, in general, uh, I really, at least when I'm working on it, I really try to find the double stops that really ring together, you know, so, you know, if I... Push it, the tempo, if you want, time. Yeah, so, and more, team, yeah? Good. I'm reluctant, reluctant to tell you, you know, I have a secret how to play fifth. And I wanted to keep it for myself so that, uh, yeah. I think do fifth not with the uh, fingers. The fingers are so intelligent. If you really focus the sound without thinking about the finger, it will go to the right place. Okay. You want to try it? Sure. Uh, Any place before? You can. in calzando il tempo. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit forward and then backwards. And you know, so, uh, yeah, try it. So make the difference. Yes. Yeah. And then Megan. Thank you. 
and immediately good yeah a little a little Lentamente, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, Lusingando. You know what Lusingando is? Kind of lasty. Lasty. So let's see how lasty you can be. So. Uh, okay. Let's not stop each time. You know, if there is. Uh, Let's prude. Okay. Okay. Fifth in the history of the viola. The Barca No. This one. You know, the orchestra plays for half an hour before you play, and then finally the soloist, if we can call it, it's not really solid, but you come. And you don't want to miss that note in the first, you know, first time we hear. 
And so usually people are so afraid of this fifth, and uh, I'm not, I was not an exception, you know, until really I discovered, you know, that the way to do it is to think about the two strings exactly the same, you know, the same sound and with core and inside the string, and miraculously the, the left hand does whatever it needs. So when you play, okay, so. yeah, yeah. So, But not, why, lo, not too long. Tee-dum, pum, 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 yeah. This is When you play C string, don't be on the fingerboard. Yeah. Yeah, I have a little advantage on. on Go 
goal is to do all this, first of all, that we hear the double stops, and secondly, you know it and not on or you know, all this. No, you know, like it should be like uh, full of energy. I was talking before about your generation, you will stop, you know, so it's... Uh... We don't need to stop every time. Yeah, okay, and then the last, then you stop. So if you don't stop before, it will be more noticeable. Yeah, so do for here. Something like this, and uh, again the fifth. Think about the four. If I play my fifth, uh, I go near the bridge. Then it sounds not because the sound and intonation are married. You know, the better sound, the more the better intonation. Okay, and like, you know, the same as the Paganini Caprices, is that, you know, it's a beginning, and now, you know, like, the, this not a little better, this not a little better, until you feel comfortable. Bravo. Okay. Okay, now. We have five minutes, and uh, with the next one who is playing, I already heard her in Curtis and worked with her. So she's just going to play it, and we are going to go on time.
I don't know if you heard what I say. We are out of time, so I said, since we worked in, on, in Curtis on this already, that's it. <laughs> that's it. And I have to say, it was really good. I really liked it. So let's say I have nothing to say. <laughs> I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Bravo. Okay, thank you.